In the last video, we looked at solving equations where we had an unknown on one side. In this video, we're going to look at equations when we have an unknown on both sides of the equation. Let's look at an example of what we looked at before. So with an unknown on one side, we could, for example, have 2x plus 1 is equal to 7. We saw in the last video that we would subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. That would give me that 2x is equal to 6. Then we would divide both sides of the equation by 2, and that would give me x is equal to 3. So we solve the equation for the unknown, which is x. We check that that works. 2 times by 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So we can say that is correct. What we're now going to consider are equations where we have the unknown on both sides. So let's start off. 4x plus 5 is equal to 3x plus 12. So this time we have an x on the left hand side and an x on the right hand side. The way I like to solve these is to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. So using exactly the same approach as I did before, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. The reason why I'm choosing this side now is that we have a smaller quantity of x's. If I subtracted 4x from both sides, I'd end up with negative x. Just see these now as a set of scales. These are balanced because we have the equal sign. So what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. If I do that, I'm left with just 1x over here, plus the 5 is equal now to the 12. So I'm just subtracting 3x from both sides. So if you can imagine these were weights, just lift them off, we're left with one of these unknowns, plus 5 is equal to 12. We simply need to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, and that will give us now that x will be equal to 12 minus 5, which is 7. So all I've done is step by step to undo this and get the x's alone on the left and the numbers on the right. So we can see from here now that x being equal to 7, 4 times by 7 is 28, plus 5 is 33, 3 times by 7 is 21, plus 12 gives me 33, so we know that that answer is correct. So all I've done is a nice step-by-step -step equation and gone ahead and solved. Let's look at another example. Let's say I have 3x minus 4 is equal to x, so just 1x, and then we're going to have plus 6. So I can see now I've got 3x on the left-hand side, I've got 1x on the right-hand side, I've got minus 4 and plus 6. So what I'm going to do is subtract 1x from both sides of the equation. Again, I can see that I've got more x's on the left-hand side. So subtracting 1 is going to leave me 2 lots of x minus 4 is equal to 6. I want to isolate the terms in x on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. If I do that, I'm going to have 2x is equal to 10. I want 1x, so I'm simply going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. All we're doing is following on from the last video and using exactly the same technique. So if this isn't making a lot of sense to you, please go back and watch that video, as this is all we did. We did step by step, we isolated the unknown, so we got it by itself, and then went ahead and solved. Let's look at this one. Let's say we've got 6x plus 1 is equal to, and on this one we will go now for, and I'll say that this is going to be now 6 minus, and we'll go for 6 minus 2x. We want to solve for x. So I've got over here 6x plus 1, and over here I've got 6 minus 2x. So what I'm going to do to both sides of the equation is add 2x. If I add 2x to this side, we can eliminate this negative 2x. So just adding 2x to both sides, so plus 2x, so plus 2x, 6x plus 2x is 8x, plus 1 is going to be equal to 6. So if I added 2x, we're going to end up with no x's. 
At this stage, I'm going to subtract one from both sides of the equation. I want the x's on the left-hand side and the numbers on the right-hand side. So if I've got add one, I need to subtract it. If I have subtract one, I would add it. So we end up now with 8x is going to be equal to 5. We now go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 8. We want 1x, not 8x's. So dividing both sides of the equation now by 8, we get 5 over 8. And this is our answer. Again, don't worry that that's not a whole number or integer. That is the solution. We can check that by substituting back in if we like and see that it will hold for this equation. So don't be concerned if you come up now with a non-integer value. We can go ahead and work out what this will give us. So if we look at this in a calculator, if we now put in five eighths, so we can say six lots of five over eight. So that's my answer for x. And then if I add one to that, that's going to give me now the value of 19 over 4. So let's just write that in. So if I now substitute this in to the other side, what we're going to have is 6 minus 2 lots of the value of 5 over 8. And this should give us exactly the same, 19 over 4. So if we do that, we will see we get 19 over 4. So we can see that it works. Remember, the equation must balance. Let's try another one. Let's say we've got now on, and we'll go for, let's go for now, we'll say 10 minus 5x is equal to 3 minus 2x. So what we've got here are now negative x's on both sides. What I'm going to do is try and make them positive, and I'm going to add 5x to both sides of the equation. So if I add 5x to both sides of the equation, that's going to give me that 10 is equal to 3 plus. So if I have minus 2x and I add 5x, that's going to give me 3x. I want to solve for x, so I'm going to isolate this term and subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. That's going to give me 10 minus 3, which is 7, is equal to 3x. I simply need to divide by 3 to find the value of 1x. So dividing both sides of the equation by 3, we can say that x is going to be equal to 7 over 3. And that now gives us our answer. Again, check it in a calculator if you like. Okay, let's now introduce something slightly different. Let's say we've got three lots of 2x plus 7. And that's going to be equal to, let's say, 4x. And then we'll add, let's say, 41. This time, we've got single brackets in here. So what we need to do is multiply out the brackets and go ahead and solve. So in the tutorial on expanding brackets, we saw we multiplied everything on the outside by the inside. So 3 times by 2x is 6x. 3 times by 7, we've got positives. That's going to give me 21. That's going to be equal now to 4x plus 41. At this stage, I'm going to get the x's on the left-hand side by subtracting 4x from both sides of the equation. So when we're at this stage, we're back to solving as we would normally. That leaves me that 2x plus 21 is equal to 41. I want to solve for x, so the first thing I need to do is subtract 21 from both sides of the equation. So if I subtract 21, that's going to give me that 2x is equal to 20. All I've done is taken 21 off both. I'm now going to divide the equation by 2 on the left and on the right. So we're going to get x is equal to 20 over 2, which is 10. So we end up now with x is 10. If we wanted to find if that worked, substituting back in, 2 lots of 10 is 20, plus 7 gives me 27. 3 times by 27 gives me 81. If we look on this side, 4 times by 10 is 40. 40 plus 41 is 81. So we can see that this is the correct answer. So we've gone ahead and solved an equation with brackets. 
Let's just do one more. We'll have a go at another one, make it slightly more challenging this time. Let's say we've got two lots and we'll go for, uh, let's go for 3x plus 14. Uh, and that's going to be equal to three lots of x plus nine. We'll go for x plus nine and then we'll subtract 11. So let's go ahead and expand this out. So two times by three x gives me six x. Two times by positive 14 is going to give me now 28. Expanding the brackets, we're gonna have three x plus now the 27 and then minus 11. So I can tidy this up a little. I can write this now as six x plus 28 is equal to three x plus 18. So all I've done, at plus 16, sorry, let's just do that, plus 16. So all I've done at this stage, let's go ahead and rewrite that in. So that's going to be plus now the 27 and minus the 11. So we get three x plus 16. At this stage now, we're back to where we were. I've got six x over here, which is positive, three x on the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. Now you could say at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 28 from both sides of the equation. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to subtract the 3x from both sides. That's going to give me now that 3x plus 28 is equal to 16. I'm now going to subtract the 28 from both sides. So subtracting 28. That will just leave me now, 3x is equal to some number. That's what we're always looking for. We're looking for x to be equal to a number. So if I do that, 3x is going to be equal to negative 12. At this stage, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by three. So showing clearly what I'm doing, that's going to give me that x is equal to negative 12 over three, which is negative four. So does this work? Well, if we substitute it in, three times negative four is going to give me now negative 12, plus 14 is two. Two times by two is going to give me four. If I substitute this in, what we're going to have is now with a negative four here, that's going to be five. Three times by five is 15, minus 11 is four. So we can see it holds now when x is equal to minus four. We'll finish with one more. Let's say we have now x plus 11 plus 2x is equal to 3 and then we'll have x minus 4. So the first thing I'm going to do on the left hand side is collect like terms. x plus 2x is going to give me now 3x. In fact I'm going to change this. Let's uh, let's just change this over. Let's make that, uh, we'll change it over to make the equation work. That one wasn't going to work. So let's do um, x plus 12 uh, and then we'll have plus 4x and that's going to be equal to three lots now of x minus 4. So collecting the like terms we're going to have 5x plus 12. I'm then going to expand the brackets, so expanding the brackets on the right hand side, 3x and then we're going to have now minus 12. Don't be tempted here to say, oh, just take 12 off both sides and that will disappear. That's not the case. Plus 12 and minus 12. Hopefully you can see why my equation wasn't going to work uh, before with the numbers I chose. Um, if you didn't spot that, hopefully you will as we go through. So what I'm going to do now is subtract 3x from both sides of this equation. So subtracting 3x, that leaves me that 2x plus the 12 is going to be equal to negative 12. I'm now going to subtract 12 from both sides as I just want to isolate this term here. So subtracting 12 from both sides, let's do that. That's going to give me now that 2x is equal to negative 24. Dividing both sides of the equation by two, we end up now with x being equal to negative 24 divided by two we got a positive and a negative, which will give me negative 12. So that is our value of x. Now if we look at that and plug it back in, what we have here, and we'll do it from here, we're going to have minus 12 plus 12, which will give me 0. 
then I'm going to have plus 4 lots of minus 12, which gives me minus 48. If I put my negative 12 in here, that gives me 3 lots of negative 16. 3 lots of negative 16 is going to give me negative 48. So we can see that this is uh, true. So it holds true. So there we go, solving equations with unknowns on both sides. In a later video, we will look where we have fractions involved, but hopefully that's given you a good start. And the method that I've used is the balancing method. We discussed other methods in the last video. I think this is the best one, especially if you're going to take your maths any further.